remember Iron Man? Yeah, all that red robotic hood fiasco in the movie with our hero Tony Stark designing a robotic suit and dramatically wears it on like an exoskeleton. Well, turns out it's not just another fantasy because what we're about to discover is something just like his costume. And that might have been just a bit of an exaggeration, but let's give you some perspective. You see, among our less intelligent friends, we mean the animal kind, many possess a skin or body exterior made of hard substances like armadillos, for instance, with their spiky armor, or maybe tortoises and turtle shells. This gives an extremely vulnerable being something to defend itself against big predators like snakes or tiger sharks. This tough exterior is, as the video name suggests, an exoskeleton, and scientists have been eyeing this concept to replicate it for serving humanity. Can they make us superhumans? What can we use them for? Do they look like spacesuits? Stay tuned to find out. But first of all, for all of you who are new here, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we dive into thrilling worlds of AIs, robots, and future technology. So if you don't want to miss out on the latest updates and events about fascinating new AI inventions, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for new videos coming out every week. Now let's jump right in. So what are exoskeletons? To make it ridiculously simple, a structure that supports and protects an animal's body. Well, today we aren't talking about bones and mammals. This isn't a National Geographic channel after all. Today's agenda is a man-made exoskeleton manufactured as mechanical structures that humans can wear to increase their strength and endurance. Sounds like something right out of a movie, doesn't it? BBC also covered this exciting scientific quest in an article back in 2018 with a thrilling perspective. The technology to give people superhuman strength is currently being developed. Still, the ethical questions about whether we should be developing it and in what circumstances it should be used are just beginning to be asked. Well, just to state something obvious here, an exoskeleton for humans would be an external frame worn to support the body, either to help a person overcome an injury or enhance their biological capacities. Powered by a system of electric motors, the frame gives limbs extra movement, strength, and endurance. The MIT Biomechanics Lab has researchers actively working on engineering effective models of exoskeletons that are more aligned to the human body as the original forms were on animals. Examples like the Phoenix and the Suit Xs are one of the world's most advanced and lightweight medical exoskeleton products developed. They're especially designed to help individuals improve their mobility by bringing comfort and supporting weight to prevent fatigue during work hours. Here are just a few examples of what we've been able to achieve so far with the different models released yet. A Twitter user named James shared a video describing the powered exoskeleton allows you to go up and down stairs while carrying heavy objects. Take a look at this powered exoskeleton spine shared in another tweet. Here's another example called a kinetic exoskeleton, which is the stuff of sci-fi dreams and nightmares. This is yet another revolutionary bionic exoskeleton helping children walk again. This is the indigo exoskeleton which carries out a pre-gate training activities like a stability aid for movements in all directions, use of therapy bands, boxing as well as ball toss. An article titled How Can We Better Link Mind and Machine mentions how youthful exoskeletons can be. Exoskeletons can help a range of users complete tasks, from factory workers lifting heavy components to enabling mobility for people with disabilities. More so than any other machine, users must operate an exoskeleton as an extension of the body and be able to focus on the task at hand, not on operating the exoskeleton to make the most of the muscle and machine. It's no surprise to think that exoskeletons are going to change our lives as the technology advances further in the years ahead. Stephen Ashley, a writer for the Mock Blog, discloses in an article, Today, powered exoskeleton suits are becoming a reality. Perhaps several hundred commercial and experimental exosuits now operate globally. But until somebody invents the equivalent of palm-sized power plant Tony Stark wears in his chest, real-world exoskeleton suits will have to make do with an all-too-limited power supply and much less spectacular capabilities unless they can stay tethered to electrical cables in factories or at work sites. But any need for power cables runs counter to technology's fundamental long-term aim, enhance individual mobility for anyone everywhere. 
According to Nathan Harding, the CEO and co-founder of Exobionics, the exoskeleton is designed to get a patient moving around as soon as possible after an injury. This could make a huge difference in speeding up recovery time. What's really exciting about our device is patients can get up and they can usually get two or 300 steps in the very first session, Harding tells Popular Science. And so that really starts to make an impact early on. Online communities are also starting to talk about this ingenious invention. A Reddit thread online had an interesting discussion with the hot topic being, giant robots are unrealistic, but what about small powered exoskeletons? Are those plausible? A guessing game begins with the comment, I wanted to add a cool powered exoskeleton that allows soldiers to wield one heavy M134 minigun on one arm and another grenade launcher on the other arm. Basically, it's just an increase in the guy's strength so he can carry larger, more powerful weapons. Is this realistic or unrealistic? Very realistic. But it won't start with combat. Material handling is a huge part of logistics, and logistics wins wars. Powered exoskeletons are already being researched heavily because they can increase the load-bearing capacity of an individual within a comparatively small resource footprint. He also added an educated guess saying, once we have improved these suits, speeds, mobility, and battery life, I expect to see combat versions. Crew served weapons will no longer need crews if you build a suit that can manage a battlefield environment. Heavy machine gunners, mortars, and artillery units would benefit from an operator with five times normal strength. Now, let's get real. This makes those childhood fantasies of becoming a superhero seem closer to reality now. Wearing Superman's cape or the Dark Knight's mask, yeah, those were good times. But imagine wearing high-tech body armor. That makes you super strong and tireless. It would be battery-powered and computer-operated, incorporating motors and hydraulics, maybe simpler with passive designs that use springs and dampeners. Let's explore some of the first-ever designs of exoskeletons. The first one is called Prosthesis, a giant mech suit designed for racing. It weighs 4,082 kilograms, and the quadruped amplifies the pilot's motions. It can tackle any terrain at a speed of 19 miles per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. Moving on, Dr. Octopus was the second. We know it's weird, but also a 3D printed, fully functional suit with four tentacle arms powered by eight motors, hence the name. It was built for a 10 year old boy with a condition called hypermobility. Next, we have Guardian XO, a full body powered wearable robot that can lift up to 200 pounds and enhance the human productivity while reducing the risk of injury when lifting and manipulating heavy items. With this superpower robot, 100 pounds feels like one, but it's also the first battery powered industrial robot. Then comes Arrive. It's a nine foot suit that can be activated in a minute. Skeletonics designed this movement magnification suit. It's powered by the kinetic energy of the pilot's movements, and despite the enormous body, it's surprisingly agile. Exo S2 is a full body robotic suit designed for heavy lifting, and by heavy, we mean a whopping 91 kilograms, and that too several hundred times, as well as climb stairs and punch stuff you're mad at. Moving on, let's talk about Rewalk, which is specifically designed for people with spinal cord injury. There have been four uncontrolled studies suggesting the supervised use of Rewalk is safe. It costs a whopping US $71,600 for a personal device and $85,500 for an industrial device with of course the additional annual service fees because who doesn't have that amount just waiting to be spent, right? Wrong. That's why it's likely to get cheaper ahead. Mate XT is our first Como's exoskeleton that reduces shoulder muscle activity by 30%. Its ergonomic design enhances comfort and flexibility during lifting. Last but not least, DARPA has designed Warrior Web to reduce a load of soldiers with the help of a network of sensors that evaluate muscle performance and further provide 20 to 30% strength. It's just like one of the dialogues in Marvel's infamous Iron Man series where Tony Stark describes his new invention. My new armor. I finally found a way to merge all my different armor modes into one. Armor that can change shape and color scheme based on mission stats. Armor not attached to biology the way that freaks out just about everyone, but is completely attached to my brain synapses. I have to take this out. But let's get real for a moment. With all the scientific inventions, there's some gray area which has to be suppressed to make way and give a chance to these advancements. And exoskeletons happen to be no exception. 
A PhD robotics student raised a concern saying, we discovered that the exoskeleton actually introduces a competing mental load. We really need to understand how this affects the user while they attempt to complete tasks. A user would typically be required to control a specialized suit of armor by using technology alone. And the armor may be powered or manipulated by the user's thoughts, so the user would have to concentrate for the suit to function at full capacity. Take a look at this man using his mind to control an exoskeleton, allowing him to walk. With all that, you'd also need a constant or rechargeable power supply for activation and continual use, otherwise the suit could potentially drain the user's life energy, rendering them unconscious or possibly even kill them, so it's not something to be toying around with. That said, we've reached the end of the video, so hit that like button if you'll be trying out an exoskeleton in the future, and if you enjoyed this episode. We'll roll out exciting new videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel with the notification on, and we'll see you in the next one.